you read the books and you learn a lot. But going through a program like this, an intense program in two days, with the material, either you read it before or not, doesn't make a difference. What they do in this program, which I'm impressed, is they make you use it. And you can feel it as you go with it. I mean, you can use it right now. I can use it right now. A butterfly has the life cycle of a day. A star has a life cycle of a million years. This journey I'm taking you on with this methodology will teach you how to make your company a star and not a butterfly. There's so many businesses that can benefit from this because what I see in, in the workplace often, I mean, you have all of these different, different styles of management, different types of people, but they really aren't coming together as a synergistic whole. Do you remember the first time you learned how to drive? You get in your car, oh, here's the stop sign, you better stop 30 feet before the sign, look both ways. Now you're juggling plates, putting on your makeup, you got a fax, you're cooking in the car, you're doing 50 things. Why? Because you know the road ahead, right? Wouldn't that be great if you could predict certain things before they happen? I, I'd never been to a, any kind of a management consulting one that had this kind, you know, one that was, one that was oriented towards um, consulting and making impacts in corporations to have the experiential things. I mean, I've, I've been on you know, adventure experiences with a group that already went with the intention of going, but I didn't have that blended in with a introductory course, if you would, before. So that was a real treat. I have to admit, that was a real treat. You have to work on bringing things together because things will fall apart by themselves. It's called the order of entropy. The natural state of things will produce change. Bringing them together takes an effort, not only in your companies, but in your marriages, in your personal lives. It's got such a wide appeal. Like it appeals, it appeals to everybody. I mean, and everyone, no matter where they are and what they're doing, it has it has certain uh, it has certain benefits to it, and they're measurable and they're immediate. So you can, you know, in just one afternoon or like this thing in two days, you can make an impact on someone where it, it might not even be business related in the short term, but if, by changing themselves, it will indirectly affect their business. Let's take a look at GoGo, which we call the wild years. This is when the market finally recognized your product and you have strong sales and strong cash flow. You've become successful. Like a two-year-old, you have a short attention span. You're into everything. Everything looks like a opportunity, right? They never see any problems at all. I probably, uh, like a few other people, were skeptical in the beginning. The physical part of learning I've never experienced before. Give them a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone goes through these cycles and they're perfectly natural at least the front part of them. Know where you are exactly in the cycle and then find out is this normal or is this abnormal. My change is that Monday I will clean my desk. <laughs> <laughs> we had some really powerful techniques um, to help us integrate what we, what we had learned uh, the first day and it ended with a wonderful bonding uh, kind of exercise. So let's take a look at the stereotypes. Now remember, these are stereotypes. In a world, nobody's really that extreme, are they? When does a Lone Ranger go to work? The first one in, right? And when do they leave? Last one out. Do they delegate? No, they're like big vacuum cleaners. You're not getting that done. Here, I'll take that. I'll take that too. I'll do this report over here. Okay, I'll take that. I'll be it on my desk. I'll be inside. Let me know when you need me. An arsonist. When do they come to work? Who knows? If you work for an arsonist, how do you feel typically? Swamped. Overloaded. It fits in in a business context, and that's something that I was ready to give up on the business world, but this kind of gives me new hope for bringing it in in a different light. We call these people bureaucrats. When do they come into work? 
On time. When do they leave? On time. What's their typical answer? No. They'd rather do things right than the right things wrong. What do they call that? A super follower. Bob, you okay? Is Betty involved in this? How about Bill, is he involved? Well, let's not make a decision until we get everybody together. Let's get everybody involved. I'm not going to take the lead on this thing. How does the group want to do this? There's nothing subjective in, the, in what, we, what I've seen today. It's immensely objective, and that I appreciate a lot. You know, you need tools. This is not a subjective tool. Go back to your buddies that you did the A and B in process with, match up with your A and B, and share with your buddy what your management, what your conflicts are based on your management styles between what you want, what the perception of the job is for you, and what's going on with you right now. Go. We did have very uh, awesome business implications, specifically to the business I'm in, but also um, it has very uh, light, you know, personal applications as well. And I found out where I am in my own personal life cycle, as well as where my business is in its, my enterprise is in its life cycle. Take a look and see if in your own personal life, if you have not been prematurely aging in your own job. What stage of the life cycle are you at right now? Where are you? in relation to your career, job, enterprise, what you do for a living. It's not funny, we always say, when we meet each other, say, what do you do for a living? In Western culture, we look at people as to what they do. But no one ever said we're human doings, we're human beings, are we not? Take a look and see what stage of the life cycle are you at personally? Are you personally an aristocracy? Is form more important than function? When they said that there would be board breaking, I said, well, maybe I'll just check myself out of that, of that one. What I want you to do is you're going to take a marker, and on one side of the board, you're going to draw a big X that's connected right in the middle. It can be a symbol, it can be words, it can be whatever you want it to mean. On the other side, you're going to draw or write what you're going to break through to now that you have broken through what stops you in life. It's really not about power. You're just going to go through the board. It's not about power at all. It's very, very easy. Most of all, it's about you supporting the person in the middle. This affected me. I, I, I didn't expect it. The technology itself is great, and then the way it was presented so that it's really getting embodied into the physiology. I said, well, you know, some of us are going to break through, and they're going to have the right technique, and they'll be able to do it right, and some aren't. It's just, there's no way the group's going to make any difference at all. I really mm -hmm. held that until now, mm -hmm. and I'm just completely blown away. When I come up against the wood, the wall, whatever, um, <laughs> Instead of just beating myself up about my own energy, I've got all a huge pool of resources. So what life is about for me now is focusing through and moving my hips. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how the very people that you feel closest to now are people you didn't even know yesterday? How you have just instantly built a complementary team. That is what this work is about. So those of you who are looking at doing this, Boy, do I invite you to come along because I'm telling you, this is the tip of the iceberg.
How do we keep on being young and being productive? How do we keep ourselves you know, connected with society and life? And I've learned a lot through this course, which is totally apart from our profession. And this is more important than my profession.